Hi there, so today I'd like to show you a tool that I install on every machine uh, that I get these days, and that is Expression Design 4. It is my go-to uh, vector-based design tool, straight after Paint.net, which I use for kind of pixel raster-based editing. Expression Design 4 is what I use for my sort of uh, vector-based design. I'll show you some of the features of it and why you might want to use it yourself. Before I do that, I need to mention this tool has been sort of discontinued, but you still can get hold of copies of it on the internet. I am trying to keep its memory alive via a fan site called expressiondesign4.com, where you can download and install it yourself. And there's a bit of information about it and its history and a link out to the Wikipedia article as well. So what can it do? Good question. So this is the main interface. It won't look unfamiliar it's very very easy to use and this is why it's perhaps a bit better than something like Inkscape which I find a bit complex I like my tools to be very very simple so this down the left hand side is your sort of basic tools then you've got your properties your layers over on the right hand side and then a bit of information along the bottom and then the menu at the top so far nothing surprising so I've got some headings as to prompts as to which features to show you so I will, I will try and do that and not leave anything out. One of the things you can do is uh, zoom right in using either the, the magnification at the bottom left, or you can uh, control and wheel mouse scroll in, which is nice. Because it's vector based, what you'll find is you can uh, zoom right in and not see any sort of granularity. And that's perhaps one of the benefits over you sort of raster based editing tools like paint.net you get this really really crisp uh, image depending regardless of, of how far you zoom in so that's why I say vector based the other reason I say vector based is you can do things like uh, drawing like this and then I can edit all the vertices in that uh, directly if I wanted hence why it's a vector based tool I can do that if I draw uh, like a shape as well, gonna swap out some colors so it's just not boring and monotone. And I can do the same with text as well, anything really uh, that I, well not anything, but most things I put in here. Speaking of text, let's add some, let's go for, let's go back to black. Oh, was that an ACDC album? Can't remember. Anyway, uh, so if I type in some text here, do some text, look at that chunky font, lovely. One thing I like about the text system is that uh, you can get a preview of the typeface before you actually choose it, or you can, or, yeah, or switch between them. Some tools, weirdly, you have to choose them to see what the, the effect of the font is, but I, I do like this. So let's go back to that really nice chunky one, because we'll come back to that. Okay, then what I can do is I can drag the size of that if I want. Notice it changes the size over here. I can, again, wheel mouse control down to reduce the size or I can choose from a drop down list as well. So lots of nice options there. I can give it some features. If I've got lots of text, I can center align it, left align it, right align it. Let's make that a bit smaller, shall we? So that's text. Don't think so. Well, you can do things like sort of moving, rotate it as well and stuff like that, but you'd expect that, right? Strokes. So strokes is kind of neat. So if I add a shape here, let's make this a nice orange. I can actually give it a nice border just like that. It's not very well defined, so what I'll do is I will increase that to maybe like a like a five. And then that's strokes. And the other thing I can do with the strokes is I can even do that to my text. So let's just control C, control V and copy that text change it to have a nice light blue and then give it a black outline so there you go that is uh strokes on text so i can make that nice and thick if i want or nice and subtle uh, if you yeah it's pretty neat and then the other thing i can do is play around with the layering system the layering system is really uh really powerful so if I'm in layer one at the moment, I'm not actually using layer two, so I'm just gonna delete that. No, don't want to delete the layer one. Okay, so in layer one, I've got everything that I've put onto this canvas already. So I've got my text, my shapes, 
everything basically. So with a layering system, what it allows me to do is if I draw two shapes and let's make that a red one and then let's make this one a blue one. I can drag these around so that they are in front or behind each other and that will change the, the rendering uh, of the which order to put them on the canvas, I suppose. The other thing I could do is right click and do arrange, bring forward. And I think if I do control page up, oh, the shortcut for it, I don't know what it is. Anyway, you can do the via sh shortcut as well. So that's layers. Again, those are objects within a layer, in fact. I can actually add another layer and add an object into that. And now it's layer two. And I will add another shape. And that should go in front of both of them. Yeah. So you see layer two is in front of layer one, so it knows that that needs to go on top of all of them. Pretty powerful stuff. So that's layers. The other thing that I can do um, with uh, layers is, well, not really layers, but I can uh, sh change some of the properties of these shapes. So let's go and do that. Let's have a green. We're not used green yet. Let's have green. And let's have another shape, which is, do you want, let's not even have a square. Let's go all round. Let's go for a, I don't like lime green, but I'm going to go for it. So I've got a lime green there. So I've, again, shapes, but on all these objects, there's lots of different properties I can change. And that's shapes and the text. So you see here, I can change the opacity so that um, you can start seeing through this shape. So I move it around so that we can do that. And then let's go and carry on with effects. Uh, let's let's do a let's go back to shapes. The other thing I forgot to mention is you can change the corner radius on this. So if I do change that to 20, I make this a nice rounded um, rectangle. And I can combine these. So I can have corner radius, I can then give it a, a stroke. And then I can also make it opaque or tr slightly transparent as well if I want to. So I can combine all these things. Effects. Let's talk about effects next. Go back to my trusted rectangles. Let's go for a light blue this time. Okay. Effects are pretty neat. So what I can do is I can... There's lots of different effects. I'm not going to go through them all. So you might want to play around with these yourself. So I can add a drop shadow there. But as I said, I can change the properties on that drop shadow so I can make it less harsh. I can make it look higher or lower from the um, from a shape. I can change the opacity, the color of the shadow. Don't know why I want to change the color of the shadow, but I could if I wanted. I could change the angle of which the, I guess, fake light source is coming in at uh, to affect which side of the shapes the, the shadow comes out. So that's one effect. So let's do another. Uh, let's go for let's go for red again. So another effect that I sometimes use and you will be very uh, familiar with is bevel, which kind of makes it look like it's slightly 3D, not completely 2D. And again, I can change all the properties on that bevel um, to do whatever I want. There are a bunch of other effects, and I, to be honest, don't really use many others, so I'm not really going to go through them all. Okay, so alignment is nice. So let's go for boring grey this time. Okay. Now, alignment is really, really helpful for people that like things in a certain way, and to all line up and just be so, like me. Uh, so if I put a lot of shapes here, you'll notice all the sort of same uh, size and shape and one way of aligning them would be kind of painstakingly zoom in and then work out if they're, they're all lined up but what instead I can do is select them all then you'll notice along the bottom bar here at the bottom it's where bottom bars generally are you can align it via the top edges or the bottom edges and this should be pretty similar to be honest and then the other thing I can do, if I want them to be equidistant away from each other, is I can distribute them from their horizontal centers. Yep, and there we go. So with two mouse clicks after selecting them, I've got them all lined up and all equally spaced out. I can't tell you how many minutes that has saved me uh, over, over, the, over time. 
Okay, so that is alignment. The um, before I forget, there's a grid, nice grid you can toggle on. Control hashtag, I think, and you can snap to this grid as well. Very, very useful for for again uh, layout as well. So thought I'd mention that because I always forget it. Formats and exporting. So by default, this file format you're using is .design. So I can save this away, reopen it in Expression Design 4, and then I can carry on editing all these different uh, vector-based shapes and text. So the other thing is I can export what I've got. Uh, there you are, export. And um, in different file, file formats as you expect. So you've got PNG, JPEG, GIF, the usual suspects. The uh, one thing to mention is if you don't have like a background like I've given it and you go to export, it will try and think it's clever and say, oh, do you want to make this transparent, have a transparent background? You can knock that off to have like a, a solid background, but just bear that in mind. It is useful if you do want a transparent image. It's really good for, for transparent text as well. I find if I go file uh, export there, I just want some transparent text. It just knows to, to give me that option, which is kind of neat. The other thing I can do is select a bunch of different shapes or different objects. Uh, and if I just want to export a subset of them, it will do that. It'll know just to export them. And again, I can knock the transparency off if I wanted to. So that's file formats and exports. I think we've covered that. But at this point, you still might not be wowed. Uh, so I thought I would show a couple of samples that ship with the product. And these uh, kind of show with some practice, the kind of effects you can achieve with these sort of vector-based tools, including Expression Design 4. So all these were created, I probably, I use an Expression Design 4, and these are all very much vector-based paths, some gradients, uh, and to be honest, that's probably it, just a combination of different gradients uh, and vector-based um, objects. Let's do one more. Samples, what was it, clocks? So this is a nice one showing how use different uses of gradients and transparencies can can uh, achieve nice looking effects as well. So there you go. I think that's everything. I've covered everything. I don't think I've forgotten anything. So um, yeah, please do go try Expression Design 4. It is a great tool. If you can't find it, maybe just Google Expression Design 4. I think expressiondesign4.com it comes to the top of the list now. It is an official site, it is just a fan site, so please bear that in mind. Uh, and if Microsoft are watching, please do re <laughs> reinstate this tool. There are lots and lots of people like me that absolutely love this tool. There's nothing else like it. Inkscape's too complicated compared to it. It's free um, compared to something like your illustrators from your creative suite, so I would love to see this tool get the love it deserves. That would be fantastic. So I um, hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you've learned that something. And I hope you download this tool and try it out. It is absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.